Hey guys, it's Matt. Uh, this is another Humpty Dumpty. Uh, the Rainbow Connection, Kermit the Frog, The Muppet Movie 1979. Um, I do pretty good impersonations. I'm really bad at this one. I will attempt to do it a little later. Um, don't have any food in your mouth or be drinking coffee, you'll spit it out. It's, it's that bad, but I'll try it. Um, this is another Humpty Dumpty. Now, what that means is Humpty Dumpty, and there's lots of forms of, of media, legend, lore, stories, nursery rhymes, stupid little kid songs like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, If a Tree Falls in the Woods and Nobody's There uh, to Witness It, Does It Make a Sound? All this stuff is artificially and unnaturally carried through time. Who knows exactly how it happens? Maybe we'll ponder that on the back end. Artificially carried through time to carry a message and meaning to those that can interpret it. So I don't want to actually, who knows how light or dark this is. So it might not be exactly a Humpty Dumpty. Some of the, the Humpty Dumpty examples, bullshit little nursery rhymes and stories carry through time to bring meaning to those that can interpret it. Most of them actually bring a very um, uh, insightful and positive message, if you can interpret. I don't know about this one. I just, as soon as I kind of interpret it, that this is exactly what this is, I don't have it all figured out yet. I just wanted to make this video. Um, I walked around the corner. I could read the Matrix code on this and wanted to make the video. So um, I think most of you know what I'm talking about. I don't think I need to give too much detail. Let's jump into it. I think for those that are struggling a little bit with what I'm saying, you'll understand more as we move forward. So when something... Um, and I'm going to evolve this, by the way, not the Rainbow Connection. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I guess I will make the Rainbow Connection. I'm going to call, I'm going to rename the reality itself the Rainbow Reality, because there's nothing at either end. You can search for the truth at either end, and you won't find anything at either end. Uh, yesterday, when we followed um, basically upstream the tributaries regarding the 7-Eleven event, at every turn, as you followed it up, you immediately ran into, quote, a reality breakdown. Now, I don't, again, what do you want me to call it? I don't, that's the name, well, it's something that bizarre. If somebody wants to come up with a better name, you know, come up with a better name, but for now, I don't really know what else to say. So, there, a, a rainbow reality, when you search on both ends, there's nothing there. And we haven't even searched the other end yet. That, that'll be the fun, funnest video in the world when we search how the how the idea for this stuff got started who was in the room when it was when the 711 job application idea was presented uh, i have a i have a suggestion on what we can start doing in 1968 and it's a, you know it's a 1955 meeting or see once you start on that side of the rainbow there's nothing there either it's even a funnier reality breakdown but let's stick to this okay you go to go to the lyrics um, you know, riddled with, um, <laughs> well, we'll get to the lyrics in, in a moment. One of the, let's go, let's go here. One of the things that gives, uh, if I'm going to call this a, another Humpty Dumpty or the artificial nature of how it's, how it's artificially carried through time is, um, and what led me, um, I, I saw somebody was covering this and I thought, why would that person cover it? Is it that good? Like, wh And then I looked into it, and when it's covered this extensively and carried through time, the, the system is, or the reality itself, or however this works, uh, maybe I'm not really prepared to ponder that at this time, it gives itself away. So, okay, the rainbow connection. Um, I'll show you who covered it in a moment. I'll do the first, you know. Anybody just listening, you don't need to see these images or anything like that. I'm not going to show much more than thumbnails. This is a little poster somebody put together with um, Jim Henson with his hand up Kermit's ass. Why are there so many songs about rainbows? I'll stop in a moment. And what's on the other side? That's terrible. Okay, whatever. Want me to sing it like the humongous or sling blade? Um, okay, but look at the, the lyrics are so... I don't know what you call it, occult, esoteric. It's not, oh, it's just for kids. Oh, it's just fun. Oh, sure. Sure it is. Uh, let's go here. Look at this. 
other versions. Now, it, the, the, the Kermit the Frog 1979, I guess, Muppet movie, um, it just has to be covered in 1980. Right after it, um, Judy Collins, um, Mary O'Hara, the brothers Casimero, 1980. Oh, it's covered four times in 1980. The Carpenters. It's just so great that all of these artists are going to cover it because it just has to be, um, you know, it's so wonderful. It's such a great, great, great song. No, when this happens, it's being artificially carried through time. What exactly that means, I will talk about it some. By who knows how, you know, yes, the Minions are involved. Why they have to carry this artificially through time relate to interpreting the lyrics except the lyrics themselves which I'm not really prepared to do yet for those just listening let's go through this quickly because it's ridiculous it gives itself away 79 was Kermit the Frog on the damn stump Judy Collins 1980 Mary o- Mary O'Hara 1980 Brothers Casimiro 1980 The Carpenters 1980 Leah Salonga 1981 Kenny Loggins 1994 Yum Yum 1996 what's Yum Yum Less Than Jake 1997 me first and gimme gimme's. Hmm, that's one of my favorites. 1999. Willie Nelson, 2001. Sarah McLaughlin, 2002. The creepiest of the creepy, doing it right around the 7-Eleven date. Peter Sinotti, oh, Sin- 2003. Jason Mraz, 2004. The Dixie Chicks, 2004. Johnny Mathis, 2005. Jane Monhate, Monhate I don't know. 2009. Trespassers William, 2010. Weezer and with Haley Williams, 2011. Jim Brickman, 2012. Edu, 2012. Yale Whiffenpoofs, 2013. Z Avi, um, 2014. Gwen Stefani, 2015. Todd Smith, 2016. Sleeping at Last, 2016. Julian Villard, 2017. Lisa Loeb, 2017. That's the one I came across, the, Le- the Lisa Loeb. And I'm like, what? Why is she covering this? I'm like, oh, no. It's one of these things being artificially carried through time. Dan Stevens, 2017. Maddie Pope, 2018. Jim James, 2019. Casey Musgraves and Willie Nelson again in 2019. And the one that really got my attention, the queen witch mother, Barbara Streisand, covers it in 2021. When you, oh, when you really want to introduce it back into reality, you bring out, you know, the queen mother, the queen witch mother, Barbara Streisand. It's basically like um, the way Celine dripped her blood on a sleeping victor in the coven or a Marcus or awakening. That's basically what, basically what happened here. Um, you know, she could be, um, what was it? She could be Amelia, this one here, Barbara from the, from the coven, who, um, whatever. So, um Guys, there's just it's just not that good, okay? The rainbow can it? Okay, sorry. It's not that good. This is artificially carried through time, and let's just get an idea why. Okay, let's let's look at the lyrics. Actually, before looking at the lyrics, if anybody's struggling or anybody's new, just a minute or two. Um, talked about many things in the past, of which you've heard me talk most about Humpty Dumpty. Songs, nursery rhymes... Things that for some reason, quote, end quote, the reality must, and the minions must assist, carry through time because it gives a tremendous, I don't know, the same words we use all the time, occult, esoteric, um, a message of enlightenment, a, a message on a carrier wave that only those tuned into a certain frequency can see, like me and you. People, of course, the normie or your best friend down the cul-de-sac would think, you listening to this and me giving this presentation, we'd be absolutely out of our minds, they would think. But who would be right? The, the, there, there's a tremendous, when you see that many artists covering it, and you get a sense very quickly in going over the lyrics, a tremendous meaning that's being delivered here, and it'll be up to us to determine if it's a dark or light message. Usually, it's a very light message that ends up benefiting those of us who can see, but sometimes it can be dark and light at the same time, whatever, let's just get into it, won't sing it anymore, why are there so many songs about rainbows, and what's on the other side, rainbows are visions, but only illusions, and rainbows have nothing to hide, okay, first off, it starts talking about, it's reminding 
um, those that are about to become enlightened, you know, you know, hint, hint, why are there so many songs about rainbows, uh, not counting the, the, the 40 covers that will be on this crappy song? And one of the main principles of reality giving itself away, of carrying something artificially through time, is when something's not very good. This is not that great. It really isn't. The song, okay, I'm not saying the lyrics aren't or the, the meaning. I'm just saying to the average person down the street, you know, it's cute, but they don't, they just, they might buy the cassette in 1979 for their kids or something, but it's just not that good. It's not that good where it'd be covered over and over again. So you, you, got, you understand what I'm saying. There's, a, there's an esoteric reason why it's being covered over and over, or a cult. Um, so, but it's also hinting, you know, that Judy Garland, um, the Wizard of Oz, somewhere over the rainbow. How, hey guys, it's saying, wake up and notice. Why have there been so many songs about rainbows? To me, I'll, I'll, I'll warp that into my own thing of re, the rainbow reality where you try to search both ends um, and you'll find nothing. There, there is no pot of gold. Searching for the pot of gold is probably a, 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 a meaning. Go out outside yourself and search for the pot of gold. You'll never find it because it's inside yourself. Rainbows are visions, but only illusions. I mean, you know, there you could do a. I, I'm I'm not the best person to do this, but somebody could probably do a half hour presentation on the first uh, stanza or whatever you call it, first paragraph. Matt, it's not Shakespeare. Well, so we've been to, more lyrics. So we've been told, and some choose to believe it. I know they're wrong. Wait and see. Someday I will find it. The rainbow connection, the lovers, the dreamers, and me. I don't know what this is saying here. So we've been told, and some choose to believe it. I know they're wrong. Wait and see. Uh, whatever. I, well, I, I'll look at these lyrics more closely some other time. Next paragraph. Who said that every wish would be heard and answered when wished on the morning star? <laughs> Someday, some, somebody thought of that. And someone believed it, and look what it's done so far. That's good. Just insert the morning star into a kid's poem, into a kid's song. The, you know, how did that? How did that? Uh, how did Satan get passed passed off, or or Lucifer get passed off? Um, see, that's when that's there. You know, there's a message. Somebody that that wrote the cute little kid song and presented it to Jim Henson. If anything were real, he'd be like, you know, if, if, if anything not were real, but if anything was at the the base reality level, the dumbed down reality level that your Aunt Ginny believes it, or 99 point whatever, whatever percent of people that saw this in the theater, and when I would have seen it in the theater and I didn't, I wouldn't have seen the second and third level meaning either. Of course, we're just seeing that now because of our new levels of perception and because they're taking such a big bite of the shit sandwich. So I can't get on the regular guy and girl for not seeing the second and third level meaning. But Jim Henson is no dummy. He would have, if this was just about being fun for kids and nothing more, he would have said, well, it's cute, but you wrote the morning star. Yeah. Did you not realize that's, that's to a, a couple hundred million Christians. That's Satan. Did you know that? Go. Ch he would just say, if anything, if it was just about kids. He'd say, go change the lyrics. Of course it's supposed to be there. Of course, it's in the Bible. Even Jesus is also referred to as the morning star. So it, there's, there's a reason it's there. Okay, I don't, again, I'm not, I'm just here to kind of point at the, the matrix code that jumps out. I'm not ready to interpret these lyrics yet. If you want to do that, um, go ahead. But obviously, the word morning star is there for a reason. Just like the first canine dog on the 7-Eleven job application day, the canine unit, the only canine unit that happened to die, it was called Sirius the Dog. Yeah, right, sure. Yeah, that that's just a cool... You conspiracy theorists, uh, it's just a coincidence. We have like 10,000 coincidences back to 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 back. One in a trillion, or if you add all the coincidences up, it's one in 10 trillion chance all of this could occur. All right. Next one. What's so amazing that keeps us stargazing? Oh boy, their astrology, <laughs> their astrology inserted right into it. What's so amazing? What's, I'm not going to do it. Should I try to do it? What's so, no, see, I lose it. I have to watch it and then, and then I have to do it. I can't, I, it's been a while since I, I watched the, I watched the YouTube presentation of, of him on the stump but now I can't do it. What's so amazing that keeps us stargazing? And what do we think we might see? Someday we'll find it, the rainbow connection, the lovers, the dreamers, and me. It was Kermit the Frog talking about lovers. 
you know, passionate 1979 puppet frog on a stump, putting in the the minds of uh, you know passionate lovers wrestling around uh, with the air conditioning broken in their in their beds in August. I mean, that's just not appropriate. But this ain't a kid's song. That's why it was covered a hundred zillion times, right up to the Witch Queen that covered it. Um, Barbara, next one. All of us under its spell. It's talking about spellcraft. Are you kidding? All of us under its spell. We know that it's probably magic. Oh, boy. Have you been half asleep? Yeah. Not half asleep, Kermit. 99 point whatever percent. I can't, nobody can say 99.9 again in a, in a truth video because that's all. Oh, the match is going to drop to 666. You, so we, I've, I've, I've now taught myself not to say 99.9, as you've noticed. I just have to say 99 point whatever. Yeah. If I, God forbid, if I ever say the number 33 in a video, oh, I knew, I spent 10 years here, but I knew he was working for them. Uh, have you been half asleep? And have you heard voices? Oh, my goodness. I've heard them calling my name. Oh, boy. Is this the sweet sound that called the young sailors? What? The voice might be one and the same. Is this the... Oh, boy. He's talking about the... Um, the What is it called? The um, Not the muses. Not the harpies. The sirens? He's, what's the siren message here? Oh, boy, this ain't for nine-year-olds, man, that went and see it in 1979. I say that because I was born in 1970. I would have been nine when I, when I would have gone to see this. Oh, he must have just dropped a number. All of us, let's do that again. All of us under its spell, we know that it's probably magic. <laughs> have you been half asleep? Have you heard voices? I've heard them calling my name. Is this the sweet sound that called the young sailors? <laughs> the voice might be one and the same. That called the young sailors beckoning up on the rocks. The, the harpies and the sirens to smash their ships upon the rocks. <laughs> Maybe this is the, you know, there's sometimes there's dark. The, the positive message has to be in here, right? Um, per the uh, retro causality language that comes from somewhere greater than the minions can can put their their hands on something something comes from you know source or god or comes from an aspect of ourselves that that can help us but but boy they're these, these minions are going to get their dark they're going to get their dark lyrics right next to the carrier wave of of anything positive we can use right last part i've heard it too many times to ignore it it's something that i'm supposed to be someday we'll find it the rainbow connection the lovers, the dreamers, oh boy, and me. Um, oh boy. Look, I other than what I just did, I can't, you know, break those lyrics down. Um, I'm not prepared to do it, and maybe I'll never be able to do it. It's just not. I can read it. I can notice it in terms of, um, you know, I just uh, in terms of the the ultimate level of what's being delivered here. Um, I'll take. I'll you know the message that I'm. I'm taking away of the whole rainbow thing right now, and this will evolve over time, is it's a rainbow reality. That's not what this is saying. I don't, I don't, in any way, I don't believe that's the message here. But what I've been taking out of, of, I just, it just hit me recently. I went, that's it. It's a rainbow reality. When you study it at one end, you look for the pot of gold to, to figure it out. How was this pulled off? How could all of this been coordinated? How many thousands of people had to be in on this? It all breaks down, just like we did in the video yesterday. But the other end, I can't wait to do that video, is more fun. Where did the idea come from for all the fake uh, events? Or, or even something like, even, you know, the, the, the idea to put um, a, a, a fake man in a fake um, capsule and a fake limb, you know, on, on into that sort of a, of a mission. Where it is, I don't know how, you know, if, you, if I continue that sentence, the video won't load maybe, but where did that idea come from? You know, the original meeting, see how that, that it, it, that's where it breaks down for me. And it's so much more fun to go, to go there. Yes, you had it. Remember, you know, I did this a while back with little George Soros. Yes, little George Soros, you had an idea. Yeah. Well, Get President Kennedy during the State of Union speech to announce that um, I propose by the end. Uh, I haven't heard this Kennedy either, so this is bad. By the end of this decade, we uh, put a man safely on the moon and return him. Um, something along those lines. So you're gonna, 
so you want Kennedy to propose this to the nation and then see, we can't do it. So what do you propose? This is, well, well, what we'll do is we'll get tens of thousands of people involved in the project. But see, little George, we, we can't do it. We know you can't put somebody, you can't put two, you can't put two people in the top of, of 100 million pounds of liquid fuel and you can't go anywhere. We know that. I know we know that. I know you can't, but we're still going to, we're going to perpetrate that fraud onto the world. How? By getting tens of thousands of people to work on it. And we'll explain it away just in terms of simple compartmentalization. That Everybody will buy it. I mean, those that see right through it and the conspiracy people that see right through it, that nobody goes anywhere, they'll just say the guy that made the glove you know, we'll just we'll just give them the conspiracy people that can see right through everything. We'll give them compartmentalization. That way, the explanations on how this has continued to be pulled off, they'll just keep looking inside their same toy box for the exam for the answer. They'll keep looking inside their reality bookends. They'll keep saying that um, skull and bones just pulled it off, and regular men and women. They won't look to the edges of the rainbow. They won't look to the reality breakdowns on either side. So just give the first grade truthers bullshit like compartmentalization. To see, the guy that made the glove, it's simple. All he knows is the glove. He makes it and he stitches it. Like Tommy Boy, he caresses it and it's naughty. And he puts his hand in and he, well, oh, this will work in space. And then he just passes the glove off. And see, after that, he don't know where the glove goes. So he don't know. Nobody went nowhere. He don't know. Nobody knows. The guy that made the switches, you know, the switches, you know, Kevin Bacon, stir the tanks. All he did was stir the tanks. If you, Jack, if I was in that seat, I would have stirred the tanks too. He just, the guy that made the switch, oh, he makes a switch on the Chinese assembly line, and then he goes switch, flip, 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 and it works, and then he just sends it off to Northrop Grumman. From there, you don't know where it goes. It's compartmentalization. Explains away everything to the first grade truther. Keeps him right in the middle of the rainbow. Then they don't go to the edges where everything breaks down at the edge of the 13th floor, and they don't go to the other edge where the whole reality breaks down. They stay right in the middle where everything's, you know, clear and the rainbow connection. So um, what else do we have here, guys? Um, I need to, to wrap this up. That's the lyrics. Once again, I'm showing for anybody just listening, just the, the long list of endless covers because the, the little song is just so good. You know, it's so good. I mean, how many, think of any great song from any, Beatles album or anything just how many times has it been covered I know I don't want to get into copyright issues and paying back royalties and, and things like that. that those issues would still apply, apply here but even the greatest songs you know like Wild Horses okay comes to mind who's going to ride your wild horses who's going to sail in your blue sea or whatever it is there's something to me I've never looked at it but there's there's got to be a huge truth drop in that song um, I'm just, I'm just pulling this out. I mean, I, I could be wrong, but the amount of times it's been covered, you know, when even that, that complete fraud Bono got involved and covered it, whenever something comes back and back and back around, it's worth looking at, like there's something in there. There's something, but, but that is, you know, Wild Horse is a, is a good, it's a good song. Is it, you know, the Stones and is it, is it great? It's not good enough for the amount of times it's been covered, I think there's probably something in there, but I haven't. I have no idea. I'm just using that as an example. But, but if I'm even if I'm wrong, I'm just making a point. You know what I'm saying? So it starts being covered. Let's just let's just look at this one last time. One, two, three, four, five, five covers. And okay, these aren't the biggest um, artists. I'll give you that. But there is the, the Witch Queens at the end. Johnny Mathis is in here. Jason Mraz is in here. Sarah McLaughlin's in here. Willie Nelson's in here. Don't make it seem like it's just, you know, the remake of the uh, Chipmunks album covered it because they didn't know what to do for side B. I mean, these are major, there's major artists. Kenny Loggins, The Carpenters. So it's so good in 1979, that little green thing on his stump. Five covers inside of, let's just be generous to them, two years. Five covers in two years. Come on. Come on. You know, it's out to do... Well, then if it's out to do something with this. And Matt, well, then why did it go from 1981 to 1994? That's a long... If, it, if they're out to carry it... Well, maybe it was so big. See, it's, it's, it, the, the momentum it created 
with the five covers and the little frog on the stump. 1981, it had such tremendous, you know, reality creation, trans surfing, pendulum momentum, egregore momentum that, you know, it's monitored by the Whopper computer. They didn't have to do anything. It had enough, had enough dark kinetic energy or, okay, well, no, I'm not saying dark. I, there's actually some very, I think you can pull some positives out of the Rainbow Connection. The positives are probably right there alongside the negatives. It depends how you interpret it, what frequency you're on. But then, what to me, how it works, and I have no idea, but, you know, you can determine if you think I'm right or wrong about, about this. Um, in 1994, somebody said, um, just got a spit out, ticker tape spit out from the Whopper computer that manages the, the uh, Westworld sentient world simulation. And it's saying we're losing traction with the rainbow connection. And um, if it's a positive message, then the minions almost like a karma payback, then they have to, they have to keep if Now, again, I don't really know. I, I have not looked at the rainbow connection lyrics more than 10 minutes before I started this video. So I don't know. I would say there's po very positive message and negative, both dark. There's dark in there, no doubt about it. But there's also light for those on the frequency. But uh, don't so don't hold me to that. I mean, ten minutes I've spent on it. I just I was excited about it. I'm like saying I know what this is and I'm going to make a video about it. So um, the Whopper computer spits out and we're losing traction on the rainbow rainbow connection. We need to breathe life back into it. We need to reinvigorate it. And um, I don't know what get, get, get Kenny Loggins. He ain't doing anything. What he he did what a highway to the danger zone or whatever. That was eighty. God, that was like 85 or something, 86, 87. He ain't done shit. Highway to the... That's all he's done, man. He's desperate for a gig. Call him up and tell him he's going to redo for Return to Pooh. Um, Return to Pooh Corner. He's going to get involved and do the Rainbow Connection. He ain't going to want to do it. After after coming off Highway to the Danger Zone and that shit, probably put like gigantic models of F-14s in his concerts and he was hot. Kenny Loggins was hot, man, after Top Gun. He ain't going to want to do it. But tell him, you know who's calling. The big man that gave instructions to Bob Dylan, whatever the control structure is, and he don't, you tell old Kenny he don't have no choice. He going to do Rainbow Connection. Or, you know, Tommy Lee Jones and Will Smith are going to pay him a little pen visit. So they, you, it wouldn't get that far. When a certain, in my opinion, when a certain bat phone rings for these people, they don't, they don't push back. Just like the quote from Woodrow Wilson, um, the, one of the ultimate truth drops of all time, a quote that had to be put out for people paying attention. Um, there's a power here, Woodrow Wilson, people don't, people in business and the most powerful people in the world and the most influential people in the world and the richest people in the world don't realize that there's, it's, I'm, I'm mixing it up, but there's a power here so strong, so intense, so pervasive, so all-encompassing that when the most powerful titans of business complain about it, they complain about it in a whisper. That quote from that dark-ass quote from Woodrow Wilson, um, you know, they, that that thing, when it when it asks Kenny to, to do this, Kenny's going to do it. So Kenny, his job is to breathe a little life back into it. And if the message in Rainbow Connection is positive, say, well, Matt, why would they, why would they need, if, if the message is positive for, for certain of us on a certain frequency, why would they want to breathe life into it? Because it's like a, to me, it's like a karma balancing thing. I know a lot of people that I email back and forth, they don't like karma. I don't have any other way to present it. If they're going to take a big bite of the sandwich over here, then to stay equal, they have to give back over here to, to, to certain. And, you know, it, it, they have to embed truth that real human beings can benefit from over here if they're going to take big bites of the shit sandwich over here. Anybody screaming at me, I can hear you saying, well, how much are they really giving back if you just, you know, you're, you and a few people are on the, you know, cutting edge of kind of interpreting this shit or, or reading Matrix code and it's 2021 and you're the first dumbass in this community to even potentially go here with the rainbow connection. Nobody interpreted any, I don't know, may, I don't, I hear you, but maybe subconsciously they did. You don't think the subconscious, unconscious mind is about a million times more powerful than this little idiot box at the end, of the beginning of the frontal lobes that we've learned to think in English and to talk in English. And once the great ideas that come from the subconscious and the unconscious have to get into the little idiot box, 
that then has to um, you know put speech together like I'm trying to do now, then you most of the meaning's lost. It's you know so it's it's like the ultimate governor. It's a governor on a gas pedal that don't go more than five miles an hour. Like that, I told that story before. Um, had to drive a, a moving truck from Los Angeles to San Francisco, and if you're going fast, it's a good. If you're going really fast, I mean, way over the speed limit, it's a good just five hours or so. And I think the speed limit at the time in '96 was 70. I don't think it was much more than that. I'm sure it's probably more the I-5. From I got into this moving truck, I figured, okay, we're just gonna we're just gonna go 70, 75. And the damn thing, the pedal had a governor. The, the, a manual governor, not an electronic governor. So at, at, when it hit 59, 60, right, it, it's, the pedal started to push back on my foot. I couldn't get the moving truck over. My cousin's calling me from my car. He's ready. He's like, let's go. I'm like, I can't go much past 59. It's going to be a long six and a half hour trip. So the, the, the part of the, the mind that, that thinks in English, English is a governor, it's a it's their magical spellcraft, but it, it it limits the ability for human beings to come up with great ideas. It it puts thought and imagination in a box. English, so some of the if the message the message I might be just interpreting the rainbow connection as some sort of of esoteric meaning. Now that doesn't mean tens of thousands of people potentially their subconscious or unconscious got a different message out of it potentially as they heard it. Um, in any of these covers, if you see what I'm saying, but I'm, you know, just wild speculation. Just to go back to the basics, you see something covered this much, it should get everybody's attention and say, what is actually, what's so important for the reality to be pushing here? So, Kenny Loggins didn't do such a great job of breathing life back into it, because, well, they had to, Yum Yum had to cover it in 96, whatever Yum Yum is, probably, you know, less than Jake, me and the gimme. Willie Nelson had to do it in 2001. Okay. You know, I, I should look into the... The album was called The Rainbow Connection. We should look at the date of this album sometime related to the 7-Eleven event. And then, you know, Witch Queen 2, Sarah McLaughlin, you know, uh, her album. I mean, surfacing. I mean, the, the amount of <laughs> occult messages and esoteric meaning and surfacing and the as above, so below... But this album is called For the Kids. Yeah, I don't think we should even take a close look at that. But um, anyway, guys, um, whoever this Sarah McLaughlin, it, I'm not saying she's uh, dark or anything. Some of the, many of these people, of course, are just complete puppets that are just given lyrics, and they have no idea what they're delivering. I think a guy like Jason Mraz, you know, he, he knows a little bit more than some of these others. Some of them are just complete puppets that you know, are, are in on nothing because they just don't understand how they're serving the greater system. Um, anyway, even Gwen Stefani here, you know, Matt, Matt, there were pictures with her and Abramovich. Or whatever. Yeah, that doesn't mean she knows anything. That whole Abramovich presentation, the spirit cooking, what an absolute baited worm on the end of a hook for the truth community to lure us in. We didn't catch him in anything. When when pictures come out of Abramovich parties and her weird paintings with fecal matter and um, Gwen Stefani um, eating, eat, looks like she's eating, um, you know, the, the model laying, laid out nude on the table. When when all that's put out, it's be, we didn't catch him in anything. It's because they wanted it to get out. Now, I'm going to say that. People here have heard me say that hundreds of times and you're sick of it. But the rest of the community don't quite, quite get it yet. It's so obvious, but we keep chasing the same shit. Is that it? Most, in my opinion, most legends and lures that really aren't that good, the story's not good, that good, the concept's really not that good, that keep popping up over and over again. This is, I think there are probably thousand examples of artificial support from certain concepts by, quote, the reality itself, however you think that's happening. And even the concept of me lucky charms, <laughs> even the concept of me lucky charms, kids are chasing my lucky charm. That's a, okay. That, my, my, I agree. My, my impersonations today suck, but laugh at me if you want. We, you know, every, every, it's okay to laugh at me instead of with me. 
because of, you know, this damn thing we're going through now. It's better than jumping off a bridge. I threw Grandpa, what'd you do today? I threw Grandpa Chip's war medals off the bridge. I'm all jacked up on Mountain Dew. Um, even something like this. The kids, kids are after his lucky charms. Um, share the damn things, you greedy bastard. Um, you know, the, the concept of the rainbow... Um, it's a huge, I haven't ever dived into, I don't know who's written about it, I don't know if Nietzsche talked about it, I don't know if Madame Blavatsky talked about it, it's a huge issue, of course, um, related to the colors of the chakras and the, you know, even how, I guess, how Lucky Charms is positioning the rainbow here, the red on top, Levette's always like, flip it, put the red on the bottom, put your crown chakra up top you know the the purple i don't know how a rainbow i think a rainbow presents itself naturally when you see it outside with the red on top but the whole concept of the rainbow um with the pot of gold okay with the with that legend and lore it's not that great yet we've heard it in thousands of different scenarios thousands of different times over the course of our lifetimes and reinforced over and over again with this lucky charms the it's not a pot of gold you find at the edge of the rainbow it's some horrible marshmallow cereal could you imagine spending your whole life like who was uh searching for the um the fountain of youth <laughs> was it magellan or cortez and sailing around puerto rico places like that looking for the fountain of youth and somebody's spent their whole life equally looking for what is actually at the end of the rainbow and they're actually going to pin a rainbow down and after the first five minutes of doing it they didn't understand that you could never find it they just kept but then they actually found it and instead of a pot of gold they found a fucking bowl of this marshmallow shit cereal i mean you take yeah, that little leprechaun should run for his life you put serve up a bowl of sh freaking tasty wheat instead of instead of a pot of gold but it's it's a huge message, of course. If you can transcend, or you know the the shock. I don't know the message, but it's there. You know, I don't know what it is. You can transcend the chakras. There's a pot of gold for you in your spiritual journey. You know, there's a pot of gold for you. You know that you can you can use that pot of gold to beat the Saturn Moon Matrix. You know, well, Matt, Cap, stop putting that in everybody's head. I, you know, I don't. I think if we do the work here, that that shit can't touch us. Okay, so I, I'll need to reiterate that. You're right. If we're if we do the 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 training here, and the the working out here, then um, I believe what we do here will apply to any potential issues uh, later. But but that's why. And if anybody's saying, so wait, are you even the the serial creators are in on it? No, I, I, you know, no, I, it's just, I don't know how, how this happens. The reality has to push the concept of the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, um, related to, uh, our spiritual journey here for the tiny one half of one half of one half of 1% that can interpret it that way. Most people just interpret it as a shit ass cereal. Um, I even took years ago, I, um, I don't know how I, I mean, if I presented this now, it would be normal for my channel, but years ago, it must have I must have lost a lot of people. That was weird shit. Lego, my ego. I mean, I guess this is normal for what we talk about now, but I talked about, I must have talked about this three or four years ago. I'm like, this is like somehow the reality giving us a message, let go of your, let go of your ego or, or let, you know, you learning from Lego my ego to, to, to the saying to the reality, let let go of the ego and to find the rainbow connection. And I'm not really prepared to talk about this. I just thought about it. But could you imagine, could you, and most, most people have been here a while, like, yeah, I could, you know, that might be a little out there, Matt, but the old guard's like, yeah, I could see that. That's how the reality does business. But, but again, that one guy or girl that's finding this channel for the first time going, what? Wait, wait. It was kind of interesting what he was talking about. Did he just suggest that fucking Ego Waffles is some reality message to the uh, to the crown chakra and the, the certain people that can tune on into a certain frequency? Some sort of message about let go of your ego or or not milk reality, let go of my ego. Are you kidding me? This guy, 
That's it's like the guy that was, was seeing Mr. Joshua. Remember in in Lethal Weapon, he's like, jo- yeah, that's right, Joshua. You guys, you guys are gone, man. You guys are out there. You guys are, just have my shipment ready, or you'll talk to Mr. Joshua. That's right, Joshua. You guys are gone, Matt. And the people listening to this channel are gone, man. Thinking Lego, my ego, uh, guys. Again, would I take all my chips here? my Russian roulette chips and push them to this number saying, I know 100% this is a reality message. No, but if you observe it long enough, it certainly could be. And this is generally, even if I'm wrong, it's generally how, quote, the reality does business. Okay, this is what we're going to do here. If you want to go back to Go back to channels that just say, just talk about skull and bones. And it's just skull and bones uh, sending out faxes to get everything done. That, it's, you know, that if that's where you want to be, have fun. I'm not going to be right about everything, but at least I'm going to ask you to think outside of the box uh, more often than not. Thanks for listening.